You know, the brain is one of the most complex organs, or really the, the most complex objects uh, that we know of. Uh, there's billions upon billions of cells within the brain. There's still uh, quite a bit of speculation as to how the brain truly works. It works on a, a liquid level, it works on a chemical level, as well as an electrical level. In fact, you know, we have some of the most powerful supercomputers out there, uh, computers that are more powerful than any computer ever made, uh, giant computers that take uh, a small city's worth of power to run, and they don't even compare to the processing power of the brain, the processing power that the brain is able to, to, to do and accomplish any, any given second. It's just an amazing, amazing uh, organ. But unfortunately, with any amazing organ, much like complicated machines, uh, it can break easily. And uh, when there's trauma applied to the head, that uh, is a recipe for disaster oftentimes. Now, of course, you can have a penetrating brain injury where uh, the skull itself is pushed into the brain or an object is pushed into the brain. That's an obvious injury, and clearly it's going to cause some significant problems depending on the area of the brain that, that's injured, uh, even death, uh, usually paralysis or memory issues, uh, if not death. But what I like to do is focus on uh, the close head injuries, the injuries without the penetration. So just in terms of the complexity of the brain, as we see here in this diagram, uh, the brain isn't just a, a bowl of jello, as some people might imagine. Uh, you can see along the top of the skull there, um, sort of the wiggly patterns, you know, that's the top portion of the brain, then you get down to the more central uh, portion of the brain uh, below, you get down to the brain stem, and you can see the brain is actually comprised of, uh, of different structures in and of itself, so it's not one simple structure. And these structures all combined chemically and uh, electrically, excuse me, to, to coordinate thought, to coordinate uh, coordination, to coordinate speech, uh, memory. Everything associated with life occurs within the confines of your skull. Now the problem with such a complicated organ such as the brain is that it's, it's easily damaged. Uh, most often what we see are, are what's called coup contra coup injuries. In this diagram, it shows what exactly I'm talking about. If you, if you imagine for the moment that the brain is a, it's much like jello in a bowl, and you're moving the bowl forward and suddenly it stops against the wall, what, what does the jello do? Well, it's going to squish against the wall, the side of the bowl that, that, that's against the wall. And then it's going to move backwards and forward and backwards. And that's the idea between a coup contra coup injury, is that when the brain is inside the skull and the skull stops moving in a sudden deceleration, then the, the brain continues forward because of inertia, puts pressure and damages the front portion of the brain, and as a response, it bounces back, much like a basketball, and can damage the rear portion of the brain as well. So it's not just one portion of the brain that's damaged, often it's multiple portions of the brain on opposite sides of the skull. And then finally, in addition to that, you have your acute injury from, from the coup contra coup injury. Then you can have secondary injury, and by that I mean you have um, uh, swelling in the brain be, uh, as a result of, of being bruised. You can have some bleeding in the brain as a result of broken blood vessels uh, from the initial injury. And you have a cascade of chemical reactions in the brain as well as a result of any injury to the brain. So you can have a fairly involved brain injury at first, or the first day or two, but as the swelling uh, continues to accumulate and puts pressure on the brain and these chemical reactions occur, you can have secondary and more severe brain injury that's longer lasting than what was initially thought.